I'm Terry Atkins. I'm Vice President of Manufacturing at U.S. Music. Uh, I'm here to show you the shop and how we do things. Back this way gets a little loud. You might have a hard time hearing me talk, but uh, let's go. Come on. It's a fairly open floor. We need a little bit of space to be able to move product back and forth in racks because we move them in fairly large batches. But uh, everything comes in and starts back here. My name is Eric Carroll. I started working at Washburn Guitars in 1994. So you can see how we get the lumber in is in units of a thousand board feet or more. Um, have it stored in here for a period of time before we bring it down and start chopping it up into sections. I oversee all the quality, making sure that everything going out the door and coming through process is up to standards and up to snuff here. And also making sure that it's the right product leaving here too. These are all guitars that are sold already and are going to go to the player immediately. And uh, we'll just slide it off the racks, bring it down, chop it off, I've got a body blank. To be able to make something that, that looks wonderful but you can pick it up and, and have it emit tones and sounds and feel the right way, that's a lot to juggle. And uh, it's fun when you succeed, it really is. This is the uh, wood room. Once we cut the blanks to size, we bring it in here. It's a temperature and humidity controlled environment. We uh, season the wood out here, let it move around a little bit. Uh, every time it goes to a point where we get it to what we call a sub-assembly, like a neck with a paddle head glued onto it, and we're not ready to throw it onto the machine, we'll bring it back in here and store it so it'll season a little bit more. This is actually a farmed snake. They raise these for meat in Indonesia and skins. It's rock and roll, so it's going to end up on a guitar at some point. Musicians have this drive to make music, and if we make something that they can't get that sound or that feel from anything else, they'll come and buy it from us. Well, this is actually where almost all of the uh, cutting of the the instrument necks, bodies, everything happens in this area. It's our machining center. We have uh, four fadals and one thermwood, and each one's set up for different kinds of operations. This one over here is cutting the necks. My name is David Vogel. Um, I'm basically the CNC programmer, um, computer aided design, draftsman, solid modeler, um, manufacturing engineer, and product development engineer. Over here, we're cutting fingerboards, and you can see, I think at this point, we're cutting fret slots and we're cutting uh, inlay pockets. We're able to track quality of how the parts come off the machine and actually machine our parts just about finished to where there's very little body sanding going. Now, this is very different than other guitar companies. We do not rough our parts out. We finish machine them. All of our necks have three pin locations. The back sides of the fingerboards have the same pin so that when we mate the two, they don't slide when we're gluing them. They snap on in exactly the right spot so that everything, once we glue it up, it's got the right measurements and it's all lined up on center. I draw every part, every bolt, every piece, every wire, model it up, lay it out, program it with the best software, you know. So this guitar and every ones that come from this have been done with that technology and it's only gonna get better. So over here, we're taking that Paduke neck that you saw being made over on the CNC machine and we just pounded in a couple of, uh, of the locator pins and we're fitting it to the, uh, uh, to the fingerboard and at this point he's taping it off, getting it prepped so that when we glue these two together we don't have a lot of glue leakage. We like to have the neck feel like an old friend, not just some flat frets that are real sharp on there, we like a nice fat you know, jumbo fret rolled over real nice. So this is the body sanding area where these gentlemen take them. They'll sand the body and the necks separate 
then we'll go join the neck to the body, and then they'll bring it back here and sand the area around the body to the neck joint. And after that, it goes out and gets inspected for final inspection before it goes to paint. A lot of other places, you know, they want an endorsement deal or something, and they just stamp their name on a Les Paul or something and put a, pick, a different pickup in there for them. We do the entire guitar for the artist, whatever the specs, different scale length, different inlay, different pickup configurations, you name it, we'll, we'll do it for them. My name is Chewy, so I'm the finish, custom finish, production line finish. Okay, we're in the paint shop now, and we'll come in here and um, spray the base coats down. It'll go outside the booth area and get sanded and leveled. Come back in and get its color laid on it and its clear coat laid on it before it goes back out. Done customs for Dimebag, Scotty Ann, Dan Donegan, Zach Wild. I like knowing every guitar that comes out of here has gone through my hands because I put pride as number one. I make sure every guitar is as nice as it can be. Okay, this is a buffet department. Um, on this finish that we use, we actually take it down to a finer grit than anywhere else I've ever worked. We'll, we'll actually wet sand it all the way down to 1500 grit and then start the polishing process. Where other factories I've worked would just take it right out of the booth and buff it that way. You end up with a real orange peely finish. Maybe not the day you buy it, but over time it really shows up the problems later on. Uh, these, we buff them flat like a mirror, they stay that way. They look great for a long time. I was at one time that kid who ordered the guitar and got it in the mail and the thing was the turd, you know, and I was expecting something then other than what it was. So I would like to make that guitar the sh So when that kid opens up the case or whoever it is, they're, you know, they're blown away by the, by the thing, you know. So this is pretty much the end of the line here, the end of the tour. This is where we put the hardware on the guitar after it's buffed and set it up. Uh, Don's over here putting the strings on it, making sure the nut slots are right, getting it intonated, getting the neck relief correct, getting the intonation correct, giving it a play. We'll go the extra mile, make sure it's everything's perfect. I want it to be like it'd be my own guitar leaving this place. You know, once it leaves my bench. I consider it to be one of my guitars. If it wasn't, then I wouldn't let it go past. These guys really have so much pride in what they do, and they're so proud when they see their guitars in the hands of a young kid or in a magazine with a, uh, you know, a popular artist. There's just this work ethic that still exists here, and it's not... Uh, it's not art for art's sake. It's, you know, I, I like this. I'm going to make me one. I'm going to do it better than you. That's really what separates Washburn Custom Shop from anybody else in the business. If you ask me where do I want to be in five years, here, doing the same thing. It's more of it.